Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Kahn Report wherever you get your podcast. You can you can watch us on YouTube as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. When you're there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It's always much appreciated. In a minute, I'll get to my keys and a prediction for the Commanders 49ers game. I know it's a little bit deflating after last week, but there's three games left. They still hold the seventh and final playoff spot, so there are some big games remaining. Anyways, more on that in a minute. Let's start with an injury report that we got on Thursday. First of all, defensive end Chase Young, as I'm sure you know, will play on Saturday. He'll be limited to about 12 to 16 snaps. That's what Ron Vera has said consistently since he started practicing back in November. So what impact he'll have, I don't know. But the fact that he gets out there is a good sign for him and for Washington. He will not be what he was right away. That's just going to be asking way too much coming off the not only the torn ACL, but also the ruptured patellar tendon. That's a big, the, the package of that is a big deal. So it's very, it's a difficult road to come back from. So that's why it has taken so long. It'll also mean it's going to take him a little bit of time to get back to who he was. And we probably won't even see the real Chase Young until next year. So I wouldn't judge him off, but what we see initially with the fact that he's out there, maybe he's still an athletic guy. He's still a strong guy. If he plays his technique, he can definitely help them. The thing I would, well, I'll get to some more of that. And I'll get to more of what I think he can't do in a, in a few was part of one of the keys. But I do think one thing he also brings, and the one word you hear a lot with him is energy. Charles Leno, every time you ask him, what does Chase Young bring? That's the first thing he's going to say is energy. And that, so that's not just to the defense, but to the offense. And so I think that's obviously something that's good coming off a tough loss. You always, more energetic guys, the better. So that's number one. Number two, safety cam curl is questionable with an ankle injury. He did not practice on Thursday. This is going to be a game time decision, and it would be a big loss for Washington. And, you know, so again, I, I, I there's definite concern about his availability. I talked about this on the podcast Thursday. Yeah, that ran Thursday. I talked about there was some concern there, or at least that was a possibility that, hey, you may have to plan, prepare for it without him. That's the thing. When you have a guy like Curl, such a vital part to that defense, we saw how they struggled without him earlier this year, but it's also against this team. It's a double blow given the running back they have in Chris McCaffrey, the tight end George Kittle. It's going to make Washington have two different game plans ready for if he plays or if he doesn't. It's a little bit like when Jordan Reed was here as a tight end, they go into the week with one game plan. A lot of times, with hey, you know, they think Jordan Reed's going to be available, so you've got to prepare. But you'd also have to have a kind of a separate game plan just in case he's not. They're that vital to what you want to do, and Cam Curl is that guy. So it, they, I know they started putting something in different in the middle of the week just in case. So that's where we're at. I'm sure you know we we may find out before Saturday. But that's the deal right now. And on one other reminder, the bids for the sale on the team, the first round of bids, it's due on um, Friday. So there you go. Um, now you're up to date on all that. Let's get to the keys to the game. The number one key, this is a little bit of a, I don't like to have some cliched ones or anything like that. But I think in this game is vital because it's what I've heard from a, from a few people out there, um, whether it's coaches, players, it's two words, start fast. They have to start fast you're coming off a tough week and you've had a tendency to start slower in games, even though they did have a 10, nothing lead in New York a couple weeks ago, but you have to start fast. If you're going to try and pull an upset on the road against San Francisco, you better start fast. And that means some, obviously some good drives, but also converting in the red zone. That's something they did not do against the giants enough of. And it's why they went Oh, one and one against them. And it's something that could haunt them if they don't make the playoffs. That's on them. Not the, We can look at the bad calls that were missed or not made or, or just blown, but they did it to themselves again, and they keep putting themselves in a position where they need every call to go right for them to win a game. And again, those are bad calls, but they make too many mistakes on their own. And the only way you're going to improve as a team is by looking what you can do or what you did versus the calls that you need to be made. You can't control those. Anyway, so you got to start fast. And they're going to look to the Philly game as one as a blueprint for what they want to do. And again, even in that game, they started off behind seven, nothing because of a turnover, but they answered and they were punching back. They converted in the red zone. They converted on third downs. 
and they were able to st sustain drives on the ground. And that was a very good Eagles defense, but there is a pivotal difference, and I'll get to that in a minute as well. I think also along those lines, one guy has got to have a better game, and it's not a player. It's offensive coordinator Scott Turner. And then I think there was there was certainly – not the best uh, plan against the Giants in the second game. And it was, you know, the adjustments weren't there as well. The one drive where I thought was fantastic was the first drive after halftime where they score, they came out, they scored some, you know, some throws to Terry, but everything was off play action. They ran the ball well in the first half. The run game was pretty good. The problem with it was not giving, not being able to stick with it. Some of that was game situation. The defense did not, they needed to force more three and outs in that second half. The Giants controlled the ball in that second half. But, but Washington also kind of went away from Brian Robinson. And then you got sometimes get a little bit, it's third and three, Brian Robinson. It's inside, you're in the red zone. Start getting the ball more to Brian Robinson. So I think you're going to see um, a concerted effort to do that, <clears throat> excuse me, more. But Turner has got to help produce. It's not all on him. You got to see the line's got to protect. Quarterback's got to make the decision in the, in the red zone, especially but there is a lot that is on the coordinator and it can't just, you know, so I think he's got to do a better job in this game. There's going to be pressure on that for that to happen. Well, I thought Wink Martindale did a great job as a Giants defensive coordinator against them last week. You can't have the same thing. And one thing's, by the way, just a little, little aside, one of the things the Giants did very well is they didn't play, Wink Martindale always plays man coverage. They didn't play a lot of man last week. There's a lot of zone that was disguised as man and that I think they were able to jump some some slants some slants because of that, or 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 um, prevent some slants from being thrown because of that coverage. You see a guy looking looking like he's a man, then you're dropping and you're taking off, you're cutting off that pass. So they they never really adjusted to that. I think that was a problem. So you've got to do a better job there. Anyways, and you know you can look at play action. I know play action is something that these guys want to do more of. The Niners also happen to be very good against play action. I think they might be one of the, they're one of the best teams in the NFL at defending play action. However, it's going to be part of their game. And I'll get to more of that in a minute. And you got to, part of the reason for starting fast too, is put some pressure on Brock Purdy. That kid's, that kid's been playing nice, fast and loose, put some pressure on him, but let, let them play from behind, put it in his hands more because when it's not and Kyle Shanahan's controlling the game with his play calls, it's going to be a problem. So that's again, another reason, but I think coming off that game from Sunday night, there was a hangover from that game. And, you know, you look at that Philly game, well, they were coming off the Vikings game too. And so, you know, that which was a loss and a bad loss. But I think there's a difference this time, and we'll get to that when I get to my prediction. Anyway, there you go. By the way, in the red zone, and again, this is why, this is what you have to do to start fast. San Francisco is 26th in the NFL in defending the run, excuse me, in yards per carry allowed in the red zone. So that's got to be a key. Brian Robinson has run the ball one time in the red zone, one official carry in the red zone this season. And that was, you know, and he's got, he gained two yards, had a touchdown the other day, should have counted. We know that, but, but according to the rest, it didn't. So really one official carry two yards that has to change. That's the guy who's going to give you the power. He's going to give you some energy with his runs, get him more involved down there. So I think that's something you could see as well, because here's the other thing. If you don't start fast, there are going to be some changes here, and whether it's Taylor, you know, it's, I mean, obviously on the field, you're not going to change anything beyond that. And that's all I'm talking about right now. But if you're not succeeding in the red zone and if you're falling behind at halftime, then I think Taylor Heineke gets that first drive of the second half. And if it doesn't go well, then I think we could, then I think we're going to see Carson Wentz. So anyway, all the reasons why they need to start fast and, you know, so, and anyway, there you go. So number two, run at him. The 49ers are a really good pass rush team. Nick Bosa is a premier pass rusher. Eric, Arm Eric Armstead inside is a very dangerous pass rusher inside. So it's just a very good player inside. So the best way to combat that, you're going to want to run at them. And that's one thing they've done against some other pass rush teams like the Eagles. That's where that blueprint comes in. A big difference here is that the 49ers are much better defending the run than the Eagles were when Washington played them. They're into it's not just the defensive line that back seven plays well. The linebackers are terrific. So this this front is very good against run. The 49ers do not give up many explosive runs. In fact, uh, they 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 have given up the fewest amount of carries of 10 or more yards a season. It's only 20. 
The next best team, 29. So they're that much better than everybody else in that area. And it goes back to the linebackers and the secondary. They're just very, very good. Because if you're not getting explosive runs, it's not just the line, folks. It's what the line allows them guys behind them to do. But Fred Warner, Dre, Gre Dre Greenlaw, the linebacker, are just really good, especially Warner, but they're both really good. So why So why do I say that? Because that's where you're going to have to do it. And I do think they, they Washington has been running the ball pretty well inside. Continue with that. Robinson's in a good rhythm, has, has had three really good games in a row running the ball. Um, so you're going to have to stay committed. And one thing that teams haven't done against San Francisco, San Francisco is stay committed to the run. Some of that is score. They've won five of their last seven games by 10 or by double digits. So they have forced teams to abandon the run because of that. And I think the other thing that the 49ers do is because they can score also, and they can also, they can score quick, but they also can control the ball that it forces other teams to do something when they have it. But I do think Washington needs to be able to run the ball at them. You need to put yourself in some third and short situations. The 49ers defense is just not as good on third and four or less as they are third and five or longer. It's just, that's just the fact. So and most team, most defenses aren't, but I think with the Niners, if you're looking for weakness or not weakness, but where can, what, what you need to do, well, you need to get in third and short. The problem is that Washington's pass game in third and short is one of the worst in the NFL. So that's not good. And, and it's, it's actually pretty bad. So that's a problem, but you got to do that. And you got to be able to control the ball. Obviously no turnovers. We know that that's always a given. Um, the other thing along with that is, 49ers play quarters coverage. So one way I think they're going to attack is with down, look down the middle, some post routes getting inside. So don't be surprised if they get a couple of shots to Jahan Dotson in those, in those situations and dial some things up that way. But that's definitely something I think to, to look for because that's something that the 49ers do. And it's something that I think that they're going to try and, and take advantage of when they can. But again, it starts with, you got to put yourself in good situations. You cannot have Nick Bosa, running against these tackles one-on-one -on -one in third and long situations. It is, it's a wrap because he's, he's going to win more often than not. And obviously you can use, you can do some things like chipping them or helping at times. Sometimes I know with the, with um, the giants, they want to spread them out to take away some of that blitz look. I think with this team, you're going to have to help. And because I just don't think these tackles, I think it's going to be tough to hold up against this pass rush. And I think one of the problems is when you watch, what happens with the with the pass rush, and you know, I'll get to this in both Brock Purdy in a minute, but you get that pocket that just isn't great for Washington. So even if you're not getting sacked, if you're getting pinched and the in the tap and the guards are getting pushed back, you're not creating beneficial lanes for Heineke, either whether to throw or even to escape at times. So that's one thing that I think you're gonna have to change in the offseason is get some get some uh, get build a stronger line. Anyway, not can, can't do that for Saturday. So it's just something that, you know, you're going to have to run the ball well. There you go. The other thing is with um, with Terry McLaurin, he's going to be going up against Charverius Ward, corner who's very physical. And when you watch Ward, he's a, got a little bit of Darius Slay in him with his, the way he handles his footwork, but he's more physical at the line, going to use his hands a lot at the line. So for McLaurin, the trick will be getting off the line quick. And you saw him against Slay. He doesn't mess around with his feet. You can't sit there and dance like that against him. Because if you do, you're, as soon as you come off, he's going to jam you. And then the play's over for you. Your timing is way off. <clears throat> so the trick, excuse me, the trick for against Ward, make your move, go, go get those hands off and get in your route. Because I know for McClellan, there's got to be an urgency. Because if he doesn't get there, that pat, he knows that that pass rush is getting home. And that's where when you talk about protection, that's part of it as well. It's the timing of the receiver routes. Get to your spot in time. If Ward is holding you up and you're not getting there and then Heineke gets sacked and people are going to yell at the line, in reality, maybe you weren't getting there quick enough. And that's something that he's going to have to do to win. And he's clearly capable of it, but that's what he's going to have to do. So there you go. That's number two. Number three, be disciplined. Discipline. Play with discipline. That's one. I'll just go one word. Discipline. <clears throat> How's that? That's on defense, especially with your eyes. You've got to be disciplined with your eyes against the cows. Because if you're not, he's going to he's going to just take advantage of you. A lot of things with Shanahan is it's all about misdirection. We saw that when he was the offensive coordinator in Washington. You still see it in San Francisco, and they love running that that wide zone too. But really, a lot of it is just about misdirection, right? And get your eyes get your eyes here, and you're going there. And Washington does that to some degree too. But I think Shanahan is a master at that. 
So you've got to be disciplined with your eyes and be in your work. Be, pay attention to where your work is. And this is where, when you look at, like, for example, last week, last game against Seattle, here's what San Francisco did one play. Brock Purdy throw, fakes the throw to the left, not going there. That wasn't the play. Turns around and throws, fakes a screen to Christian McCaffrey over here. Well, because they have been throwing that screen a lot, the defense just shoots over there. Four guys run over there. Three blockers, four guys. Well, that leaves tight end George Kittle line up on the line, down the middle of the field, wide open, easy touchdown, easy money. That's how you create good situations for a rookie quarterback. So that's why I say you've got to keep your eyes on your work and, and be disciplined with it because if you're not, you're going to hurt. That's where not having Curl out there would really hurt them because – he is very good at being disciplined and just being knowing where he's supposed to be. Same with Derek Forrest, who's playing the back too, especially. So those two together are very good at that. So if he doesn't play, then you're going to look at Percy Butler or even at times Jeremy Reeves. But, you know, I think Butler would play more and you go to those three safety sets. It's a little bit different dynamic now. And does he get fooled or not? He's got the speed. We know that. He likes to hit. We know that. But will, can he be as disciplined when he against this kind of an offense? That's what we'll see if Curl doesn't play. The other thing is with the run game, when you're going against that run game, the discipline part too comes up. You can't get upfield too far too fast because if you keep if you do that now, listen, you want to disrupt the play, right? Of course you want to do that. But if you're if they're if somebody's getting up way too fast or too too high, then what Shannon, Kyle Shannon is going to do is call some cutback runs. That's what he's going to do. So they know they have to play a little bit more horizontally, maybe setting the edges. Staying, getting, keeping those gaps and and shutting down Chris McCaffrey and putting the game in Brock Purdy's hands. So that's you know that you McCaffrey's been really good the last two games. I think 227 of his like 550 some rushing yards at the Niners have come in the last two weeks. So he's been it's he's hurting teams more running the ball versus catching the ball. He hasn't made a ton of damage there. It's all been running. So. You, you know, so that's so that's why that's another reason why you've got to be disciplined with it. And here's where Chase for Chase Young. The one thing that I would would want to remind him if I'm a coach is, again, he's going to be limited with the snaps. But when you're in there, don't get over anxious. Don't be too don't be so intent on trying to get out there and make 20 plays in one snap that you you get over anxious and they take advantage of you. So you've got to play within the framework of the defense. Otherwise. They're going to exploit that. So I think that's something to watch as well. Um, and, you know, the one thing that that Shanahan does do, again, going back to the pocket, he creates a good pocket for a Brock Purdy. Sometimes it's the way, maybe it's the way you uh, move him a little bit, but it's also, it's also done by play action. Um, it's also done by some of those fakes. And just, you know, so he does a good job with that. And it, it gives Purdy some time and comfort in the pocket. Because if you can get to him, when you watch him, where he starts to get in trouble, you'll see him throwing flat-footed, not getting his feet around when there's some pressure in his face. Now, I've seen him complete some of those throws, but that's how you want him throwing the ball. Make him good, make a good throw off that. It's it's a lot tougher. And maybe you can make a play off that. That's what you have to do. You Get him a little bit, um, maybe puncture that confidence a little bit early with some of that pressure. But that's you know, anyway, so that's what Shannon can do. But it is why you've got to be very disciplined with your assignments because he will take advantage of that. Um, the other thing is, again, going back to the whole thing with McCaffrey and, and the game plan, if they don't have Cam Curl, then you're going to have to do something else with McCaffrey. I think they, the one thing they like about Curl is his versatility. He can cover backs. So I'm guessing that he was going to cover McCaffrey or would cover him if he's out there. So then what do you do if he's not? Is it Jamin Davis? Probably. He's got the speed. He can do stuff like that. So I think you're, you know, it's just, but it does alter how you do things. Um, and they did a pretty good job against McCaffrey last year when he's in Carolina, held him in check. He still had over a hundred yards, more than a hundred yards from scrimmage, but he, but they won the game. And, but the difference here is he's with a better team and he's with a better play caller. And so, you know, you know, it's going to be a challenge here. He will run outside. He will run inside. And Kyle Shanahan is very good at giving you similar looks with enough different action in the run game. And where, whether it's the, the alignment of the receiver block, who's going to block. Um, like for example, Ayuk, one play, he had back-to-back -back plays in one game where it's a little pitch toss, tossed sweep to the left where the first one, um, 
McCaffrey cuts back. Ayuk is, is more of a tighter split. He's going to go downfield and block. The next play, he's got a little bit of wider split, but you know he's going to crack. And so, but he still gets there and the blocking, they just, they're very good with their execution. And McCaffrey turns the corner and gets like 15 yards. So, but he gets you that little doubt in your mind. Of, well, the previous play, he cut back. What are you doing now? There's a little bit of a subtle change and it allowed him to get outside. Those are the things that he does, which again is why you have to keep your eyes on your work. So um, that's, but he's the guy you got to stop and put the game in Brock Purdy's hands. If you do that, yeah, you can have some, you can have some success. I mean, this is not, I mean, they, we've already seen them go to a, a, a tough place to win and do so. So in Philadelphia, they can do it. They, they played Tampa last year and they beat them. And so, you know, things can happen, but it's going to be a tough one, but there you go. That's what they have to do. Those are my keys to the game. Now a little bit of a prediction. Like I said, they, they came off, they're coming off a very tough loss. I think there was a little bit more of a hangover with that loss than for some other losses here. They had to look at that as a game that they needed. They knew they needed to win. You had the, you had what you wanted at home. You had everything going for you. You had two weeks to prepare and you could only manage 12 points and you couldn't win at home. That's really bad. There was a hangover from that. So how long it lasted, we'll find out. I don't I think by the time we're in the locker room, they seem like they're old selves. I don't, I don't think it carried that far into it. But I'm sure that Monday and maybe part of Tuesday that it was difficult for them to kind of move forward a little bit, even though that's what you have to do. So, and I brought up the Minnesota game earlier this year because that was a crushing loss as well. They blew that game. Then they, they were more in control of that game and they blew it. So, and then they had to go on the road the next week to play at Philadelphia. The difference is they had an extra day. That was a Monday night game. So I think that helped them kind of get over those, kind of lick their wounds a little bit quick, you know, do that and get over it a little bit quicker. This is tough. You're, you're going on the road to the, you know, to the West Coast short week against a team that is coming off a long layoff. They, they had the Thursday night game. So they're rested. They're ready. So and I think Purdy's getting a little bit healthier. So they're in a good spot. Makes it tougher. That's why and I, what I say about running the ball San Francisco is a really good run defense. It's just it's a really good defense in general. I just, I have my, I have some, a lot of concerns about what Washington's going to be able to do against that defense. And, you know, one thing I know, again, I brought up Carson Wentz. Will he end up playing? Well, I think if it's not going well, then yeah, he is. If they're not, if they're moving the ball and not scoring in the red zone or converting, then I do think he goes in depending on the score of the game. If they're not moving the ball and they're down by 10 or 12 or 14 points at halftime, then, then maybe Heineke gets one drive in the second half, and then I think you see Carson Wentz. So what happens? Well, I think I think Washington, excuse me, Washington loses. San Francisco wins. I'm going to go 24 to 10. I just think this is a really tough matchup. The Niners are playing it really well. I do think Washington can win. I mean, why not? Like you, you get one or two plays that you make on defense, one or two plays in special teams, and then things can change. Start fast. And I think if you do that, now you give yourself a chance. Put Again, put the pressure, put the game in Brock Purdy's hands and see what he can do. They don't have Debo Samuel. They, they This coaching staff knows Christian McCaffrey. They had him in Carolina. So can they? does that mean they can stop him? We'll find out. But that is a very good and well-coached team in San Francisco. Washington has to do play its best game of the year, better than Philly, because again, I think the Niners are in a better spot right now defensively than what the what the Eagles were. But if they can control the ball and do something, they got a shot. If not, it's going to be 24 to 10 Niners. That's it. That's it for me. So I guess Merry Christmas, Bah Humbug, or whatever you want to say on that one. But there you go. So that I will be back after the game on, on Christmas Eve to talk about the game and also whatever the implications are of a win or a loss. And just know they have two more games after this. I think they can win both games and you do that. And I think, I still think nine wins gets you in and, and then we go from there. But anyway, that's it for me. Have a Merry Christmas, happy holidays. And I will talk to you after the game. And so I will talk to you next time. <laughs>